Hey, it's Brett with Useful Aircraft. It's an exciting time, 2026. We got some new entrants to the uh, digital HD system. Um, I am interested in building and flying airplanes for my endurance uh, plank. Uh, I call it the Coyote, namely because if you lose it in the desert, you're never going to see it again. That's what it looks like. Runs off uh, 4S 21700s. Uh, it's got an hour endurance, obviously running ELRS, uh, Gemini system. You can see the antenna uh, back there in the tail with the other antenna mounted transverse uh, aligned with the fuselage. Um, and in doing so, gives this airplane some, uh, some remarkable range. Uh, go out as far as you want to go. The video systems that I've been flying with historically and originally started off with the uh, DJI 04 Lite. The DJI 04 Lite uh, obviously is uh, the best of the best. It's an absolute phenomenal system. Uh, I've seen uh, ranges out there beyond 11, 12 kilometers easy. Um, it uh, is reliable. Its penetration is uh, remarkable. Uh, latency is well known to be uh, you know, very suitable for the style of flying that I do, which is again, with fixed wing, I can tolerate slightly higher latency. Image quality is phenomenal. The uh, recording is uh, done, obviously, transmitted back to the goggles, but it is also recording uh, locally. There is onboard storage. Uh, so you end up with uh, some memory and let's see if we can get a focus. There we are. Um, and video image that you can, um, you know, later view and, and pull out with uh, remarkable quality. That is a, uh, a tremendous benefit. I love the uh, onboard stabilization that it offers, you know, through Rocksteady. Um, but I will say that video quality is, is absolutely remarkable. Um, of course, the only downside is if, uh, say, you were to lose the airplane and you weren't entirely somewhere you should be, anyone that has a copy of that video now has a copy of everything that you did leading up to that moment. So maybe that's something to consider. Uh, however, again, pluses of it. Everything, the support from DJI has been phenomenal. I'm running iNav 8. Uh, the OSD is, uh, is crystal clear. It works without flicker. Um, you know, and again, great signal and penetration for as far out as you want to go. The next two are the uh, new entrants. On the left, we have the uh, walk, uh, walk Snail. It's the Ascent Light VTX, somewhat controversial because they've ditched some of the, uh, I don't know, other uh, Walk Snail goggles. I don't have any of those. I've, this is my first foray into the uh, Caddx or Walk Snail system. Um, well, that's not true. I did have some of the Caddx uh, DJI Air units back in the day. Um, but uh, the Ascent Light VTX, it's shown as it is there. It is actually installed on this aircraft now as we speak. Uh, what I'll do, open this hatch, try and do this, keeping camera vaguely in frame. There we go, pull my camera system forward, and that allows me to pull the system out. One of the downsides of the, uh, of the Ascent Light VTX, as far as I know, uh, and in my experience, is that the cable itself is soldered into the board. Um, so when it comes out, you end up with a relatively short cable. Uh, my solder joints are about here. Um, and so you have to provide your own connection to your aircraft. And you know, I'm running a Speedy BF 405 Wing Mini in there. Um, what I did is I just took one of their DJI cables and paired everything together and soldered it up. The board itself, you know, just like all of these, um, gets a little bit warm. It was easy enough to pair. Um, it works well. The camera, yeah, I have the, uh, let's see if we can focus. There we are. I have the lens protector currently installed. I'll pull that off. You can see um, it is a smaller aperture. And, uh, and the image quality, I would say, is probably 60% of what you get on the, um, uh, on the DJI system. The DJI image quality is absolute absolutely leaps and bounds above what the uh, uh, what they have with the Caddx Ascent Light VTX. However, that being said, uh, there are some really nice advantages. The first of which, this is four times cheaper, roughly, than the DJI 04 Air Unit Light, as we call them. Um, and in being so, I'm a lot more willing to take risks when I'm testing out and proving, say, center of gravity um, or flying a new airframe. I mean, as you can see, I got plenty of these things. I do a lot of different work with them. Um, and in doing so, you know, I'll throw one of these uh, cheaper and lighter uh, video systems on board. Um, had good success with it. The um, Otherwise, the installation in my mount, as I use it, my mount is built for to maximize airflow. Uh, it's easily adjustable um, with the camera coming through down front, just like that. And when it slides back into position, again, pardon the camera work, working single-handed here. Um, 
if I can tuck this back, it cinches into place. Plenty of airflow through the airframe uh, and stays cool. Just like all these digital video systems, they do tend to heat up. Uh, they got to dispel a lot of heat. Um, so, you know, waiting for a GPS to initialize and get that first fix, uh, that is where it is nice to be able to disconnect the camera system at the actual camera system itself. Um, with Caddx's system being soldered in, you can't do it. And uh, sometimes this camera gets a little bit too warm and becomes grumpy. Uh, that is something, however, that is solved by the uh, Beta FPV, this P1 um, air unit. Uh, the obviously similar in form and stature. Um, you know, the image sensor appears to be somewhat similar. Uh, I enjoyed working with this. However, there is one significant drawback. You can see back here, um, that is the uh, plug-in for the cable, and it works basically the same pinout as the DJI 04 air unit light. That is the uh, port in order to do uh, updates to it through uh, a USB cable. Uh, the bind button is back here. Uh, there you go, other side of the board, you can see that. However, this antenna cable, I am using an antenna cable from the DJI air unit. They run a similar frequency. Let me show you why. With the uh, Beta FPV system, that is the antenna that they provide you. It is extremely short. This is the antenna that's provided to you with the DJI 04 air unit. Um, so for mounting in anything other than a whoop, I think that uh, Beta FPV's antenna is comically short and uh, is a is a genuine shortfall. I'm not not impressed with that. Um, so I did replace it and uh, I had to fly using the DJI 04 air unit. Frequency specs are compatible. Um, so um, I, was, I was fairly happy with the performance as it was. Um, obviously these were my first flights on it. So that's what I have to go off of. Uh, not a lot of other systems to compare it to and they're all using the default antennas. Things to note on the um, headsets, uh, obviously from a comfort um, standpoint and from a software standpoint, the, uh, and I'm flying an older system of the DJI, but the, uh, the DJI goggles are uh, light years ahead of everyone else. The, um, I started with the Caddx. The Caddx, I replaced their head strap and uh, modified their foam somewhat in order to make it uh, better, you know, more comfortable for me. Um, I found the Focus, and I got old eyes, but the Focus was actually better in order to read the on-screen display. Um, and that worked out fairly well for me once I replaced the strap and it was staying in place. Um, I used an old DJI battery um, that I have from one of my uh, DJI, the OG goggles, and uh, that seemed to work out fairly well. The Beta FPV unit, as it originally ships, that's what it looks like. It's got this, uh, this strap system that is... Um, I think it's junk, honestly. It, uh, I don't know. I got a big, fat Western head, and uh, it didn't work out for me. So, honestly, I, uh, I disassembled that, and I freed the battery. Um, and I, again, used one of these aftermarket straps. I tossed the battery uh, inside there. And uh, I like the balance, and I like the fit a lot better. Um, you still, for my purposes, I needed to shim the top two corners in order to eliminate the light leak. And I will say this camera system, uh, that goggle system is heavier. Um, so from a, a comfort standpoint, I would certainly say number one would be the DJI, number two um, would be the Caddx, and number three would be the Beta FPV. So that's the state right now of new uh, digital systems. Um, speaking a little bit about range, uh, you know, obviously, uh, in watching other folks conduct the test because uh, you'd, you'd have to figure out a way to, to comply with the letter of the law. Uh, I've seen the DJI air unit um, go beyond 11 kilometers even further. Um, and then with the two artisan powered um, new entrants, the Caddx, uh, you know, ascent system, and then the beta FPV, uh, you know, digital system. Those at three kilometers, you tend to run into uh, pixelization and uh, four kilometers or shortly thereafter um, in the direction uh, the goggles are facing, uh, you tend to uh, be losing significant amounts of signal and it, it very soon becomes unflyable. Uh, continuing aft behind you, if you fly overhead, I did notice with the Beta FPV system, there is more of an antenna null overhead. Um, and if you fly, uh, you know, behind you, 
um, both the Caddx and the Beta FPV system uh, tend to run out of chooch somewhere around a kilometer and a half or thereabouts. Um, so obviously if you turn around, you can fix that right away, but um, that gives you an idea of workable range, at least in a somewhat quiet RF environment. I was not out in the wilderness. This was not a place, you know, with absolutely nothing, but, um, you know, it was realistic to, to where a lot of folks fly. Anyway, that's it. Brief rundown of the three systems. I, um, I'm really happy to see them. You know, uh, as I do more development and work on more projects, I will probably be picking up more of the beta FPV units, despite the fact that I like the fit of the uh, Caddx goggles better. Um, these integrate well in that I can use the DJI harness and uh, simply attach them to my aircraft and go flying. Once I get things rigged up, running, and, uh, you know, going the way that I want, uh, at that point, the airframe is proven. I have no hesitation to plug in and put a, uh, a DJI, you know, the O4 system on, whether it's, uh, you know, starting with the light, which I really enjoy, or the light even with some of the new uh, lens systems that Flywoo's coming out, or even the O4 Pro. But uh, I think these digital entrances are uh, really a good opportunity to test the waters of new airframes uh, and maybe take a few more risks than you normally would with something that is not recording on board locally. And also if you happen to take it into the ground, it uh, they're fairly robust and, and worse come to worse, fairly inexpensive. One last note, I have not yet been able to get uh, in iNav 8, the uh, beta FPV on-screen display to work. Um, you know, I've only had it for less than 24 hours now out and operationally, but uh, the OSD in iNav 8 works flawlessly with the uh, DGI system and uh, it works on the Caddx system. However, there is some blinking of the, uh, the on-screen display elements. Otherwise, that's it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. My name is Brett, this is Useful Aircraft. Thank you for your time.